Yo, what's going on snipers and welcome back to our Colorado Avalanche franchise mode. So in last episode we had the season simulation and we won the President's Trophy as well as had the leading goal scorer in the league which was Peter Forsberg with 102 points. He was a very good player this season and I'm hoping that uh, First Line continues to tr contribute here in the postseason as we take on the Dallas Stars in the first round. Now before we get into that, I want to do one signing as I was looking at our prospects that we had unsigned from last year's draft and it turns out this Zubov guy that we drafted, I think, yeah, third round has grown all the way to a 72. So he's AHL eligible and the AHL team is also in the playoffs so I'm going to sign this guy to a contract so he can play in the playoffs for the AHL team, hopefully get them that Calder Cup. So he's automatically going to get signed. As well as I'm going to be offering our franchise goaltender a contract because he's up to a 72. I don't know if he's going to be able to jump straight to the AHL for this playoffs, but I'm still going to sign him anyways just because he needs a contract. So uh, now let's put Zubov into the lineup for the AHL team just because we want them to do very good as well. And we're going to take... How did, good did Ollie do during the season? 37 points. Yeah, we're going to take Cole Ali and put him on this third line. And we're going to take Winquist off and put on Zubov for the playoffs. He's going to jump into the lineup. Well, actually, he's going to get a couple more games during the season. I think they have like a couple more, like maybe three more. And we're also going to put Zubov on the power play here instead of Nantel. Hopefully, Zubov gets a lot of goals and hopefully he continues to do what he did in Russia, because in Russia he was like 41 points or something, so hopefully he continues there, and let's see, can we put in Carter? Yes, we can, nice. So Carter is also jumping right to the AHL. Uh, Brathwaite had a pretty good season, how did Gunnarsson do? He did even better. We're going to take out Brathwaite, even though Brathwaite was our starter down there, and put in Carter, and see if Carter could get it done in the playoffs or in the rest of the regular season. So there you go, AHL team is changed up. Now let's get to our playoff matchup against the Dallas Stars. So um, also when I was looking at the end of last episode, I realized the Dallas Stars have two major injuries and that is probably gonna bite them in the ass in this first round against us. As you can see, Ed Belfour is out with an MCL sprain. So he's out this entire round. He's probably out till like the conference finals if Dallas makes it that far. And then Mike Medano is out for the first probably three or four games with a concussion. Uh, so um, yeah, that's for us. Hopefully we can continue to uh, play good offensively with him out of the lineup. Because if we could uh, score a lot of goals and win uh, like a couple of games before he returns, we have a good chance of beating Dallas. So anyways, let's get into game number one of round number one. See if we could take a 1-0 series lead here on home ice. Let's just continue what we did during the season, boys. First period, and it's 1-0 for Dallas. Not a good start. Uh, Kip Miller, I think it is, because I think Kelly and Kevin are retired, if I'm not mistaken. Scores the first goal of the game. It is 1-0 Dallas. Shots are 11-8 in favor of us, though. Come on, boys. Second period, and 3-1 for Dallas. Not a good start at all. Hayduk ties the game up, but then Ray, yeah, Ray Shepard and Yuri Lettinen make it 3-1, to one, so we're kind of biting the bullet here a bit. Shots are 22-17 to seven, 17 in favor of us. Come on, boys. Third period underway. We need two goals to tie it, or else we're going to lose our first game on home ice, and Donovan pulls us within one, and Hayduk ties it up. Damn, Hayduk's been stepping up. Two goals in this first game of the playoffs. Can we get the goal to get us ahead? Power play... No, we cannot. Last five minutes here. Are we going to over time? No, we're not. Maybe foot makes it four to three and we're going to win four to three. That was a really good game, actually. It started off really bad, but Donovan, Hayduke and foot get goals in the third. And we're going to take a one nothing series lead, probably because of the amount of shots we had. We had like 37 total. So, uh... Hayduke from Sullivan and Miller, Donovan from Hayduke and Sullivan. Yeah, it was definitely that second line. Hayduke had like three points. Hayduke from Ozelinch and then Foot from Ozelinch. So Ozelinch as well with a couple assists. The three stars, Hayduke with three points, Foot with a goal, which was the winner, and Sandus Ozelinch, the third star. 
hopefully Patrick Waugh could uh, play a bit better next game because he kind of didn't really play the greatest. Like, I think we they had only like 20-something shots on goal and he allowed three goals. So hopefully you could clean that up a bit going forward. So let's get into game number two on home ice still. Let's see if we could get a win here headed back to Texas. Game number two, first period, and it's one nothing us. There you go, Joe Sackick. So the first line contributes. They didn't contribute at all last game, but they come through here. Shots are 14-9 in favor of us. Second period, and still one nothing. So this is a better game for Patrick Wall. He's made 22 saves throughout 20 or 40 minutes. Route shooting them 25 to 22. Let's see what happens here in the third. Come on, boys. Let's get our offense going here in the third like we did last game. We're only up by a goal, so it's still a close game. Final 10 minutes of this third period. Down to the final five minutes. Still with this lead intact. And we are going to shut them out one to nothing. So I'll take that. A good game from Patrick Waugh to rebound. 30 saves in the victory. The only goal coming from Joe Sackick. And uh, of course the assists go to his line mates Forsberg and Flurry. Three stars in that game. Patrick Waugh the first star. Harry Sateri the second star. And Joe Sackick the third. So it's good that we took it 2 nothing series lead. It's kind of uh, good that we're winning games without... Uh, <laughs> Uh, without Medano playing for Dallas and Aaron Miller are one of our best defensemen actually like top four has broken his wrist so he's out till July the 17th so we're out without one of our top four defensemen so that is going to probably bite us in the ass defensively luckily Sylvain Lefebvre is still pretty solid nonetheless but we are going to have to put in Mike McBain for the rest of this playoffs Hopefully McBain could play good. Like I think he played a couple games during the regular season, but he wasn't much of an offensive player. Yeah, during the regular season he played three games and he was a plus four, so he was good defensively, which is what we need him to do if we want to continue to win games. Okay, so Medano might be back for this game for Dallas. Let's just take a look at their lines again. Let's see if Medano is back. Because if Medano is back, that is good for news for them, not for us. And yes, he is back in the lineup, but he is playing with an injury. So hopefully we can somehow re-aggravate that injury again. Even though I really like to make Medano as a player, it's just I really need to be able to get past his first round this year. Game number three, now we're at the Reunion Arena in Dallas. Come on, boys. Let's see if we can get a win here. First period, and it's one nothing for the Stars. Jamie Langenbrunner beating Patrick Waugh. Shots are 12 to 6 in favor of us, so not a good start again for Waugh. He played great last game, but he kind of dropped the ball in that first period. Second period, and still one nothing. Shots are 22 to 13 in favor of us, but we still have not scored a single goal. Come on, offense! You only scored one goal last game. I don't want you to dry up all of a sudden. Third period underway. We need one goal to tie it and potentially bring it to OT. Power play. Come on, guys. You could do this. And we don't score on it. Penalty kill. And Dallas makes it 2 nothing. Brett Hall getting the goal. And it's a 2 nothing lead for the Stars. And it looks like we are going to lose game number three. Yes, we are shut out by Harry Sateri, I think. Damn, that sucks. Yeah, Brett Hall had two points that game, so Medano with no points in that game, but still, they managed to get the win. 37 saves from Sateri, Hull the second star, and Langenbrunner the third. Okay, we need to find our offense a bit more, because since the first game, it's been kind of a struggle, and really, Alexander Zubov has been injured with a neck strain, and he won't be back till May the 5th, so the guy that we literally just signed to a contract for the AHL playoffs is out with a neck strain already. So let's just go replace player. Hopefully that makes him not miss too much. Like, is the AHL playoffs underway yet? Or or is it uh, starting later? It might have already started. No, it hasn't started yet. So it will soon, though. So hopefully Zubov... Well, actually, that's actually a long time for next ring. He might be... Out, like, he's at the first two rounds, maybe, for the AHL team. So that's not a good way to start off a contract. 
Anyways, hopefully our offense doesn't dry up here because we've only scored one goal in our last two games. We need to find a way to beat Harry Sateri. Game number four. Come on, boys. Let's take a 3-1 in the series lead headed back home. That would be huge. First period and one nothing again for Dallas. Our struggles continue on the offensive front as we only have one goal in our last, like, seven periods. Sergey Berlin getting the goal for the Stars. Second period, still 1-0 Dallas, and they have the shot advantage 21-18. to Can someone please come through here for us? I don't know why our offense is drying up. It's 2-0 Medano. See, that's why I didn't want Medano to come back. And Shepard makes it 3-0, so it looks like we're going to have a tie series headed back home. Just because this team could not find offense here in Dallas at all. Like, we have not scored a single goal here at the reunion arena, a reunion arena in the playoffs so far. So we need to find a way to start being able to beat them. That's back-to-back -back shutouts for Harry Sateri, Medano to second start, and Breland the third. Okay, I'm going to definitely make some line changes. And, oh my god, you got to be joking. Well, I have to make line changes now. Peter Forsberg, our best player, now goes down with a mild concussion. Well, that's a realistic injury, but still, that is a big injury to have. Um, hmm. What are we going to do? We're going to put Hayduke as well on the top line. Since Hayduke had that f first good game, we're going to bring him up. We're going to put Pelton in there. Uh, Forbes there. And who are we going to put here on the fourth line? Oh, man, we have really bad depth. I See, I told you I should have traded for good depth. Um, Who's better offensively? Probably Tim Taylor, right? Uh, Taylor, 82 offensive awareness, and Deneen, 87. Oh, jeez. Okay, I guess we'll put in Deneen. Uh, hopefully, Deneen could come through for us. But damn, that is really not good. We're also going to make a couple other changes, I think, on the offensive front, maybe. Because we need to find a way to start beating the goaltender. Forbes is also good at face-offs, so we're going to move him there. We're going to put Bullis actually here instead. Yeah, and leave Pelton in down there. And, you know, actually, wait, is Bullis left-handed? Yeah, he is. Yeah, we'll put, like, Forbes as center instead because I think, yeah, he has 75 face-offs, so we're going to change that up a bit. And then defensively, hmm, let's spit up the top pairing again. We do that usually every year. Let's put Darmore with Ozelinch, see if that helps out the youngster. And Patrick Waugh has been really good, so I'm not going to change that up at all. But hopefully we could find a way to score more goals. We've been good on home ice, just in Dallas so far. It's just not been there at all. So here we go, a crucial game five. We need to start scoring goals or else this series could be a lost one. Here you go, first period, and it's scoreless. Again, our offensive woes are struggling. We have not scored in like, I think like nine periods almost now. That's pretty ridiculous. Second period, and 2 nothing us. There you go, guys. Bullis and Ozelinch. So we make the change where we put Darmour with Ozelinch, and Ozelinch gets a goal. We also move Bullis up, and he scores a goal. So that is good news for us. We're shooting them, out shooting them 19-9. to We're ha We have the advantage. So let's just win this third period, boys. There you go. 3 nothing. Hey, Duke getting them uh, promoted to the top line, making it a 3 nothing lead. We kill off a penalty there. See, our offense, like, it does good on home ice, it seems like, right now. But right now on the road, it's struggling. So hopefully we don't have to go to a game seven. Hopefully we find our way in the next game. And we are going to take a 3-2 to two series lead headed back to Dallas. Great performance from the guys that had line change problems. So, well, line, line changes. So Ozelinch from Drury and Flurry. Bullis from Flurry and Ozelinch. And Hayduke from Sullivan and Deneen. So Kevin Deneen. Getting put into the lineup, picks up an assist, probably because he's on the power play in Forsberg spot, but still, that's huge. 3 nothing or three nothing win, and we have a 3-2 series lead. Let's see if we could take out Dallas and move on to that second round, because the last few seasons we've been eliminated in the first round. I don't want that to happen this year. So here we go, game number six. First period, and it is scoreless again. So we still have yet to score in Dallas after seven periods. 
But we're out shooting them 9 to 6. Come on, guys. You could score a goal. I know you can. Second period. And it's 2 to 1 for us. There you go. Oslinch and Watt. Medano gets a goal for Dallas, so it's still a tight game. They're out shooting us 21 to 16. Come on, guys. Let's just lock this down here in the third and move to the second round. Let's trend our way back upwards. I know we've been falling back as of lately, but come on, we could do this. Final 10 minutes of the third period. Penalty kill. Nicely done. Final five minutes. Time is winding down, and we are off to the second round of the playoffs with our first win in Dallas. That is a huge win, and hopefully that uh, gives us momentum going into the second round. So Ozlinch from Darmore and Watt, so Darmore picks up his first NHL playoff point, I think, and Watt from Ozlinch. Three stars in that game, Patrick Watt the top star, Watt the second star with two points, and Ozlinch the third star with two points. So I guess Ozlinch seems to be playing a bit, a bit better with Darmore. He has six points though in six games, so... A defenseman leading the way in points, that's kind of interesting. I would expect Sakic and Fleury to play better in the second round because they just were nowhere in that series, really. Like, Sakic had one goal and Fleury might have had, like, two assists, but otherwise they were pretty much nowhere. So let's uh, sim to the next round of the playoffs, see who we're up against. We're also going to take a look at the player stats for the first round of the playoffs, as well as we're going to see how our AHL team is doing playoff-wise. So we're going to take on the San Jose Sharks in the second round, and also Detroit and Phoenix is the other second round matchup. So hopefully we don't have to go to the conference finals against Detroit. That would be annoying. And then there's New Jersey and Philadelphia, Boston, and Tampa Bay. Okay, so let's see how our HL team is doing. It looks like they're 1-1 one one currently in the series, so that's not too bad. So let's take a look at our player stats for the first round. Forsberg should be back in six days so he might be back for like game three of the series so Ozelinch had six points in six games hey do four points flurry had three assists so not too bad but Sakic was nowhere considering he had a really good season like he had 98 points he only picks up a goal in that series so hopefully he contributes more and then goaltending wise yeah Patrick Wall was on his game so Thank you, Patrick, for doing that, because he's probably getting closer to retirement. Like, he dropped to an elite status instead of the franchise, so he might be on his way out in a couple seasons. Who's leading our AHL team in playoff points currently? Jolie, Baudin. Let me just check if... Does it show the Zubov guy? No, it's not showing the Zubov guy. I want to see what the Zubov and uh, what's-his-name did in the rest of the regular season. Before they got injured or before Zubov got injured. I want to see how Carter also has been doing. So Zubov played only how many games? Two games. He had no points, but he had seven shots on goal. So this guy likes to shoot the puck. Unfortunately, he gets injured right away. Hopefully when he gets to the NHL, he doesn't have that trouble. And then Carter played one game. He went 0-1 with an 851 save percentage and a four goals against average. So not the greatest. However, playoff wise, he's been really good so far. 1.01 goals against average. Okay, so let's get to who we're playing in the next round, which is San Jose. Let's see what their lines look like. I know for a fact that their team is probably dropping off because they let go of Jeff Friesen a couple years ago and then also Alexander Koroliuk, so their team might be kind of bad except for Patrick Marlowe. Yeah, so they got Marco Sturm, Patrick Marlowe, Bill McColt on their top line. Marlowe's up to a 90, so that's great to see. Second line, Yaroslav Bednar with Vincent Danfus and Cooper Strom, who they drafted in 2022. Then they also got Dan Kessa, Pascal Rayom, and Stefan Mateau. No league game heroics, please, there, Mateau. Or OT heroics, please. <laughs> and then they also got uh, Peter Rorel, who actually played with the Avs at one point. Manuel Weirder and Kevin Stevens, who looks like he's going to retire soon. Defensively, they got Rafji and Malikov, Marshall and Rivers, Smolik and Kokinen or Kog yeah, I think it's Kokinen or Kokinen. I don't even know. Goaltending wise, they have Steve Shields and Lance Dundas, who I think yeah, he was originally drafted by the Penguins, but he was a part of a trade a couple years ago. And in scratch, they have Vesa Antilla, who's a top six forward prospect, and Isaiah Thomas. 
not the basketball player, spelled differently. He was originally drafted by the Boston Bruins. Okay, so I think we have a chance. It just looks like San Jose actually has a pretty good team for the most part. Obviously, we have the better team, though, because we are we have more experience than the San Jose Sharks do. Like, I think they only made the playoffs in year number one, maybe. But other than that, they haven't really been in the playoffs since then. So I think we have the experience, and I think we can go to the conference finals, but we're going to have to just push harder than we did last round because we kind of struggled on the road, and this time we need to actually bring it when we're on in, like, uh, san jose so anyways that's going to do it guys for this episode of recall Royal avalanche franchise mode so next episode we will take on the san jose sharks in the second round of the playoffs and hope to get to the conference finals so thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you guys next time